Christopher for doing a demo from Consensus Lab. Hello, everyone. Um, let me share my screen. Okay, so today I'm gonna to present the project that I'm uh, currently working on as part of the Consensus Lab. And basically the motiva motivation behind this project um, comes from the observation that blockchain that are based on a reusable resource such as proof of stake or proof of space are less secure than the one uh, based on uh, a non-reusable -re resource such as proof of work. This is a work that we are also actually interested in proving formally later on. So for example, in proof of stake, there exists some attacks such as long range attacks or stake bidding attacks. Stake bidding attacks. Stake bidding attacks. Thank you, George. <laughs> Am I good to continue? Sorry. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that, that was George, just so that you know it's not me who messed up. Um, and also in Filecoin, we found actually similar attacks. So for this, if you have been following the whole like um, uh, like uh, audits of EC, we find some attacks called epoch boundaries or power game attacks, and this gives us kind of like lower lower confidence and security than the than proof of work. So I'm going to illustrate quickly uh, what a long range attack is. I'm going to consider the proof of stake setting because it's simpler to illustrate this attack. Um, but again, if you want, uh, I can share some documents about similar attacks on Fiverr. So in proof of stake, you only need validator signature in order to create a block. But what can happen is validators, they can leave the protocol. So for example, in my slide, they we will start the protocol with green validators, and then maybe later on, they will go away and we, we will have like only the pink validators. But what this means is that the keys associated with the like green validator in the past, now they are completely worse, worthless because the money has been moved, like they don't have any power anymore in the consensus. So an adversary could basically bribe the past miners by their keys at no cost because there is no coins associated with them. And with those keys, because we are in the proof of stake setting, the adversary is able to reconstruct an entire chain because again like you only need those key in order to create a block and the problem is that um a user that has been offline for a very long time will wake up and see those two chain that are as long and they will look both uh, legitimate so it's impossible uh, actually even the adversarial chain could be longer maybe so it's impossible for an, for um, at least our user to differentiate which chain is uh, valid um, so power bleeding attack very quickly, an adversary will create an alternative chain and then will get all the minting rewards to himself in order to same have a chain that looks like very long. Very, very powerful with a lot of stuff. Okay, so um, basically what is our solution in order to deal with this type of long range attacks? We want to rely on a blockchain that is ba based on a burnable resource. So basically we want to use the security that is provided by proof of work in order to help secure Filecoin. Uh, so the intuition would be to anchor Filecoin membership and Filecoin state into uh, the Bitcoin blockchain. And um, this is actually possible thanks to the Taproot update that's gonna come very soon for, uh, for Bitcoin that's gonna, that gonna allow like community very big multi sig to be to be pushed sent to to Bitcoin. So the idea is that we will have a public key, an aggregated public key that will represent the 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 Filecoin miners. And then, uh, in order to update the state of uh, the state of Filecoin, we'll just make a transaction from our public key PKI to like the new state of Filecoin, which will be represented by PKI plus one. We're going to use Schnorr threshold signature, so we require two thirds of the mine of the miner like weighted by power to sync the transaction in order to allow for an adversary to, to, to for the scheme to be resilient against an adversary. And then the idea is like the user will be able to go on the Bitcoin uh, blockchain, check the, the, the chain of transaction, start it from an initial like uh, public key PK zero, and then be able to retrieve the state of Filecoin from the Bitcoin blockchain in the case of those long range attacks. Uh, so again, going back to the long range attack, Alice, she will wake up, she will see this two chain, she will be like, which one is the right one? They all look perfectly valid. So she will go to the Bitcoin blockchain. She will retrieve the chain of transaction. 
And from PKI, she would be able uh, to differentiate if it's the right, uh, the, the pink or the orange uh, blockchain, which is the right one. So very quickly, the high level uh, protocol works as, as follows. So periodically, uh, we, it, it will be triggered periodically. So the, the members of the new configuration, so the, meaning the new set of, uh, of miners, uh, will, will perform a distributed key generation algorithm in order to generate this new key PKI plus one that will you know, uh, be the state of Falcon. And then one participant will create the transaction that updates the states. And then the participants like the Filecoin miner uh, will perform the threshold signature and the transaction will be pushed to the Bitcoin blockchain. So that's the high level, hopefully, and I don't think I will go into more detail because I think I'm at the end of the five minutes. Am I good? That was perfectly timed. Cool. <laughs> <Right> <laughs> Perfect. Yep. All right. Thank you so much. Right.